we're continuing to talk about some little details about line symbology and using our brushes that uh, are really important to pay attention to. We just fixed the railway brush so that it's nice and, uh, and smooth and even, a little bit more professional looking than it had been. What I'm going to do now is show you something about uh, intersections. Let's say, as a pretty common thing, let me start off with a different color. I got two lines here. I'm going to make a line here, and I'm going to make a line right there. And these are roads, and we want to use this highway symbol uh, to symbolize them. Uh, so the first way we sort of learned to create this highway symbol was to actually make two different lines. So let's do that uh, right now. Let's, let's do that right now. Let's take this one right here, and what we would do if we were doing this the old way would be to bump this up to uh, our seven. Actually, let me also show you that you can adjust multiple things if you have multiple things selected. So I'm going to select both of those because I want these to both be seven and then I can bump up over here and now I'm at seven. Uh, and then here I'm going to go command C and then command F for that paste in front and make it white. Actually, what I wanted to do first was to make sure this one turns black. Whoop. And it went away with the weight anyway. There's seven and this one right here would also need to be that. You can already tell that using a brush to do this would be much more efficient to rather than having to make sure that you change all of the different lines and so forth and have them all selected. Uh, now here I'm going to now I'm going to copy it and paste in the front and turn it white. And three and same thing here. Make a white copy. Now take a look at what's happened. These are supposed to be uh, highways that uh, are, have an intersection at them. But it doesn't look like there is an intersection because this black line continues uh, over this symbol. I got two different lines here. Well, of course, I actually have four different lines here because of the way that I've constructed this. And because uh, two of them are laying on top of the others, it does not look like there is an intersection here on the road. Now, that might actually be the case. In a situation like this, we might actually be looking at uh, a bridge, for instance, there might actually be no intersection between these two different roads. This may be a bridge over this road right here. Or there could be a tunnel. This could be a tunnel that goes under this. So in one of those situations where there is not actually an intersection between these two different highways, a symbol, a symbol like this may be extremely appropriate and convey that kind of information to the user. But what if there actually is an intersection between these two different highways and we want to convey that cartographically? Well, we're going to need to do something different. Uh, we can take this line right here, this white line, and say arrange, bring to front. We want that to be laying on top. Now take a look at that. Now we've gotten rid of that white, that black border because the white line is sitting on top of it. Uh, and so now it looks like there is an intersection there. These little details again are going to make sure that your cartography really stands out from the crowd and looks super professional. This kind of uh, cartographic symbol conveys the information that they, these two roads are indeed connected by an intersection. Let me show you how to do that a little bit more quickly. Again, not using the brush tool, using our old method here. First, we're going to get to the brush here in just a second. I'm going to do two different lines here. I'm going to select them both and go up to uh, 7 and make that black. OK, and then Control c Control f white. There we go. Now, because I had both of those selected, I have the black sitting at the very bottom, and then I have the white sitting on top, and I've conveyed that intersection. OK, great. But we don't actually want to do all of our roads that way, because we want to have just one road symbol and so forth. And it's probably easier to be able to apply brushes. 
So let's see what happens when I come over here and I've got this road right here and I got that road right there and I come over here to my brushes select them both and uh, this was just the ordinary art brush if you remember this wasn't a pattern brush that made my highway this was just an ordinary art brush aha now I'm back to looking like there's an overlap here I just have one stroke now and it's just got that brush applied to it and this brush here is got the this line here has the same brush applied to it and so even if I say something like arrange and bring to front now I have the other way, which may represent the situation, uh, but it still may not. Um, what can I do here? Well, I do want to point out that in the event that you have a big loop, like that, and you apply a, a brush, aha! Now that looks like the intersection that we want in this case. Now with a loop like this it may actually be that you don't want that intersection because if this is some kind of on-ramp or off-ramp then maybe you can't, once you get to here, go that way. You know, this is a big loop or something that goes in another direction. But that is the way that that particular brush behaves, one of those art brushes behaves when you intersect one of the lines. There isn't really a great answer to this problem right here. There is sort of a patch, a band-aid. If I were to take another line, I could line it up with this line right here and draw it it'll be white. I want to make it the same thickness which was three. There. I just did it. Nobody would ever know that little white piece is there, especially once you go to print it and so forth, but it, that little extra piece helps it out and removes that black line because now it's sitting on the top. So I realize that that may not seem like a fantastic way to solve the problem and that there must be some more elegant way to handle road intersections. There are more advanced methods for handling this intersection problem, especially using other software, but uh, for now we're going to leave it right here. Using one of these two different methods is probably the best way uh, right now. Although, as you can imagine, especially with the little, uh, adding the little, little sliver in there that we did the second time, if you've got hundreds of those to do, uh, it may seem like a lot, of, uh, a lot of work and it would be. So we may need to go to other methods at this point. But that should definitely get you started for the design of roadways or line symbols in general, whether you're talking about uh, roads or pipes or symbols uh, for streams. Uh, so why don't you uh, go ahead and take what you've learned here to take the time to build some brushes for different roads or for streams uh, for use in your maps. Go ahead and build out the uh, brushes for them and then go back out to your map and add in maybe some streams or a river wherever you want them to go or start thinking about some roads.